Hey, I'm Dr. Mike Roussel, and in this installment of Ask Dr. Mike, we're going to answer another Facebook reader's question asking about the ratio of carbohydrates to protein in their recovery shake following exercise and seeing if we decrease carbohydrates too much, is that going to have a negative impact on recovery? So today's question from our Facebook reader says, if I use a carbohydrate to protein ratio of less than one to one, will it impact recovery? So we look at uh, recovery shakes, whether it's pre, during, or post, because we're kind of melding those you know, like pre and during workout nutrition shakes <clears throat> are becoming more popular, I think are, are better for most people than a traditional straight post-workout shake. But if you look at say a two to one, uh, ratio of carbohydrates to protein, so it'd be like 50 grams of carbohydrates and 25 grams of protein, which would be maybe traditional for uh, improving athletic performance or muscular hypertrophy or strength. Moving it down to say one to one, so you're looking at 25 grams of carbs, 25 grams of protein, right, that kind of range. What happens if we drop lower than that, right, is basically what the question's saying. So what if our carbs kind of fall off maybe even to nothing? Is that going to negatively impact recovery? So the short answer is not really, because your body can do really well on low, lower carbohydrates. I think the key is, if you're going to reduce carbs uh, so much during your workout shake, with your workout recovery and your workout nutrition, that you, the rest of your diet should reflect that generally. So you don't want to be eating a very high carbohydrate diet, say 40 to 50% of total calories from carbohydrates, and then giving yourself no carbohydrates while you're exercising. Right? Metabolically, I think feel like that's sending your body mixed messages on what you're trying to accomplish and kind of the enzymatic machinery that it's going to be ramping up and ramping down is going to be kind of confusing. That's kind of my uh, analysis of if we look at all the literature, what that means. So if you're going to go with a lower carbohydrate recovery shake, make sure your diet is lower carbohydrate in general. Just from a practical standpoint, exercise is going to increase our insulin sensitivity and our muscles desire for carbohydrates. So even in a lower carbohydrate environment, diet, the best time to have more carbohydrates is gonna be during and directly after exercise. So that's something to consider as well. But a couple four points um, and talking points about this question directly. So the first thing has to do with glycogen replenishment. So glycogen being the sugar that's stored in your muscles, right, directly after activity, right, there's a time dependent nature for glycogen replenishment. And so right after exercise, that's when your glycogen is most readily replenished. And this decreases even at, you know, 60 minutes to, you know, one to three hours, you get a marked decrease in your body's ability to replenish glycogen. The good news is if you're not a high performance athlete, you're not doing two a days, or you're not doing intense daily training sessions, right? Uh, like training in the evening and then training in the morning, it's probably okay if you don't replenish your glycogen immediately or completely at all. So you do get a time dependent decrease with glycogen uh, replenishment, but you can still replenish your glycogen, you still have the rest of the day. So most people, I would say on average, you know, do if you're doing three full body workouts a week, training, weight training sessions, you're doing one Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if you deplete your glycogen on Monday, you have all the rest of the day Monday, all day Tuesday, and then leading up to your workout on Wednesday, before you need to have full glycogen, even if you need it. So glycogen replenishment is usually one of the rationale for having more carbohydrates right during and after exercise. But for most people, it might not necessarily be such a high priority. Talk about functioning with lower muscle glycogen, right? If you're eating a lower carbohydrate diet, your body's gonna get used to functioning with lower muscle glycogen, which is fine. Because what's really interesting about that is your body becomes more efficient with less glycogen. So when you're on a lower carbohydrate diet, and this effect, I believe, is increased the lower your carbohydrates get, that your body becomes more efficient at functioning and fueling exercise with less glycogen. And even after just one workout, there's a really interesting study showing changes in your mitochondria. So they get increases in mRNA expression related to 
mu muscular mitochondria. So you get changes related to your body increasing these mitochondrial cells, so kind of increasing the energy producing units um, in your muscle cells due to decrease in muscle glycogen. So decrease in muscle glycogen may not be such a bad thing, especially if you're eating a lower carbohydrate diet because you get more efficient and you get more muscular mitochondria. Um, there's one uh, study or series of studies that I love and maybe you've heard me talk about before. Was, I think they were done in uh, around 2006 or so. And I'll show you a, uh, a graph of uh, right now of some results from that study. And so basically what they did here was they were looking at the effects of different um, post-workout shakes and different nutrient compositions on, how, on body responses, both hormonal responses, but then body composition responses. So they had the control, which was nothing, so they basically just gave them water. They gave them a carbohydrate-only drink, and they gave them an essential amino acid drink, which nowadays you don't really find an essential amino acid drink. When they were available, they were really expensive. Um, so branched-chain amino acids is what you're generally going to see. And then a combination of carbohydrates and branched-chain amino acids. And as you can see here from this graph, that when it came to fat loss after 12 weeks, fat loss was exactly the same. Um, when you look at changes in lean body mass, the group that was protein and carbohydrates, they had the greatest increases, but the carbohydrate and essential amino acid group had similar changes and similar improvements in lean body mass. So you can do really well just on amino acids fueling your workout. So what do we do? How do we put this into common practice and to play? So common practice would be 10 grams of branch chain amino acids before and during exercise. So you mix up your uh, branch chain amino acid shake, 10 grams is usually one serving, right? In some water, drink say half of it on your way to the gym, fill, fill your container back up with water and so it'll be a little bit more diluted and you can drink that through the rest of your workout. And that's gonna deliver for most people uh, basically all you need if you don't wanna add carbohydrates to your workout shake. Um, I know a lot of people who maintain very lean uh, low body fat levels throughout the year and they train basically just on uh, branched chain amino acids and some creatine. So you can do really well and it doesn't impact recovery as much as you'd think. Okay? So uh, hopefully that answers your question about manipulating and lowering the carbohydrate to protein ratio for your recovery shakes. Um, that's going to wrap it up for this video. You can do really well on a low carbohydrate recovery shake as long as the rest of your diet is also low carbohydrates. Um, if you have any questions about this, post your comments below the video or uh, either at YouTube or below the video at microcell.com. If you're at YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, and also make sure you visit the blog at microcell.com. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.